Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes, and cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Will you please turn with me in your hymnal to, uh, I put a hymnal beside everybody out there, to our, our hymn this morning, To God Be the Glory, uh, page number 298. 298. To God be the glory. bow with me. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. You are the Holy One among us. What a mystery our lives seem to us. To you our lives are no mystery at all. We worry so to live correctly and do the right thing. Why should we worry when you are more than able to give us peace? Why do we not find the peace you have for us when you hold it out for us in the palm of your hand? We act like it would be so difficult to just reach out and take it. Our lives would change. We would be more happy, more secure, more peaceful. But we have so much to hold on to, so much to give up, so much that is our own, too much for many to let go of and just reach out to you. Teach us that what we have from our own hand is not worth worthy of the gift you have for us. Teach us to know that your love for us is worthy of our trust for you. Your peace passes all understanding and it is your peace we come here this morning to try to understand. Fill us with your love and accept our humble worship. We can't be like you but help us to try. For it's in the name of our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. 
If you'll turn back with me to the screen as we go to uh, our responsive reading from Psalms 135. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have ears, but they hear not, neither is there any breath in their mouths. Amen. Bless the reading of God's Word. Our praise hymn this morning, Rain or Poor. We had enough of that, right? That's what we're here, to learn to trust the Lord with all of our lives. And what a wonderful thing he's, he, he is making for us. We'll get into that when we get through with Revelation. It's such a sad, sadness for me that, that people don't know Revelation and the beauty of what, what uh, the, 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 our life is going to be like uh, living with Him. So we, this is October, so I want you to think about uh, uh, communion that we'll have in a few minutes. And so, you know, maybe quietly uh, go in prayer and, and, uh, and check your heart and your, your position with God and, and clean everything out that's in the way so that you can take uh, communion with us in a little bit. So because it's October, we have a new memory verse. John 3.17 For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. John 3.17 Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Well, we had some had some rain. It rained on the way over here, and it uh, sometimes it just really came down a, a little bit. But I'm glad that uh, none of you got washed out, and all of you are here uh, this morning uh, to to have a, a, a service uh, with the Lord. We have a lot of stuff going on. Uh, if those of you that uh, that uh, came in uh, this morning and had time to read uh, on the new board. We have a concert coming up. Um, this is this guy, Ron Elrod, and a lot of people know Ron Elrod. Uh, they've seen him. Uh, he's played with uh, 
the, the Blackwood brothers and uh, the Oak Ridge boys and the Imperials. He's been with the Gaithers. Uh, he does a lot of uh, concerts at churches. And so uh, we happen to have, uh, he asked us if we wanted to. It had a cancellation someplace out over in Franklin and he gave me a call and and uh, I, of course, said yes, and, and then when I, I, I'll have to admit to you, I, I, I didn't know the name at first, and then uh, somebody said, oh, I think I know that name, and then we finally got the picture on the, uh, on the, on the, uh, on our webpage, so we could make some posters uh, for him, and everybody said, oh yeah, I know that guy, we've seen that guy. So, you've probably, you've probably seen him if you, uh, if you uh, watch, uh, uh, have, have watched any of those, or been to any of that, but he's going to be in concert concert here uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, we're proud to say uh, here at uh, uh, 37534 State Highway 408 if you're going to plug that into your GPS to get over here 37534 State Highway 408 and of course that's in Centerville even though we're between Hightown and, and Townville but we're going to have a great concert at 6 p.m. on the 15th that's a Saturday on the 15th at 6 p.m. and uh, uh, you know I don't know I I don't know how long we'll go, but we're gonna go and we're gonna fill the place up and we're gonna have a have a great time. So that'll be that'll be a lot of fun if you like uh, um, music. Uh, Thursday again, continue to have our Kid Fusion program, and boy, the kids are doing a lot of a lot of great stuff in in Kid Fusion. I told the kids this this uh, next week we have potluck. So next week we're I think we're going to have tacos for potluck. Uh, uh, taco. Okay, I see. A, yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, so it's going to be taco Sunday next Sunday for potluck. And I told the kids that Thursday because making ice cream you have to prepare the. So we bought a we we got a uh, ice cream churner there. And uh, so we're gonna we're gonna make ice cream Thursday uh, for the kids, and then we'll that that way it'll cure or or ripen what they call it whatever uh, between Thursday and Sunday, and we'll have we'll have tacos and homemade ice cream, and and the kids all voted, and what they voted on was what what kind of ice cream did you vote on, yeah. Madison? Chocolate. Uh, what? Chocolate chip. Yeah, that's right. Chocolate chip ice cream. So Thursday for Kid Fusion, the kids are gonna we're gonna get together. We're gonna make chocolate chip ice cream on Thursday for our potluck on Sunday. Um, I still have a few signs. I want to thank those who got signs last week, uh, but I've got a few signs still left. Uh, and you know, if I get overrun with people who want signs, I'll just have some more made, right, Gene? Uh, you know, we'll just get those out. So we we uh, we're glad, glad to have them. nice looking signs. I've had a lot of people stop by and talk to me. But I have a sign. It has a, a thing a uh, 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 stand you can put in. And uh, if you uh, want to give us a call, I uh, want a sign, or you you write me a, an email. Uh, uh, or letter uh, at one of the addresses over here. We'll uh, we'll get you a sign out. Puppets, Sarah. I think we got puppets coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, we we're supposed to get a date, but we'll we'll have a date uh, soon. That's Saturday. What we've decided to do with puppets is it's going to be puppet and Saturday birthdays. So what we're going to do on 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 the puppet night. What we're going to do for puppet night or puppet afternoon from uh, 11 to 2 on a Saturday is is that's going to be the day that all the kids in that month have their birthday party. So every every puppet time will be uh, I'll be a birthday party uh, uh, and it'll be for the kids who have birthdays that that month. So uh, that way nobody gets missed out on a birthday party and and we'll have puppet and birthday party on Saturday and that that we're going to start up again. Uh, in October, and and and, and uh, that's coming up in the, in the next couple of Saturdays. So we're we're trying to we have to change the schedule because of the concert. All of a sudden now we can have a lot of stuff going on at the same same time. Like like we're trying working on getting a newsletter out, and so we can send out to everybody uh, around. And and uh, I'm gonna mention Podlock. And then last week. Last week we started our once a month uh, thing, uh, uh, movie night, and we showed God is Not Dead 2. And I told everybody that, that I had seen God is Not Dead 1 in the cinema, 
and I thought that was pretty good. That made me cry. That was that was a really really good and really good movie. But when I saw uh, God is Not Dead Dead Two, it, it it was just even much better. And how often do you get to see a sequel that's the second is better than the first? But this one, I promise you, is correct. Those who saw it. It's uh, number two is much, much, and, and that doesn't take anything away from number one. Number one was very, very good. Number two is just excellent, excellent. So uh, if you get a chance to, if you get a chance to see the movie, uh, uh, please go and see that one. And so we'll have a, we'll start having movie nights on, uh, on Wednesday night. I think we're going to move the, the time down a, a little bit earlier than we did the last time. Uh, maybe that will be better for uh, uh, for for people instead of at eight o'clock where might at uh, six thirty seven or something like that. We'll we'll look at some times, and then I want to say we're moving our Bible study this week. We're going to start start our moving our Bible study uh, till Tuesday nights at six thirty. So if you want to write that down, Bible study instead of being in the afternoon, we've got some other. Uh, uh, some other people live in the community that, that work and would like to be in Bible study with us, but it's kind of hard for them to be, or impossible for them to be here during the day. So we're going to change that Bible study to 6.30 uh, in, the, in the evening. Uh, and uh, then, uh, uh, so that, that'll be a lot of fun. And I, I know we all really enjoy our Bible study time together. Any other announcements that I need to make? I'm probably forgetting something because there's always a lot of stuff going on. But uh, you can catch us on Facebook and and uh, all of that. We again, they want to uh, thank. Um, uh, if you need to call somebody in in uh, the Titusville area, you can call Sarah eight two seven three two seven five, or you can uh, call me here at the church nine six seven three six two eight, or you can write me a PO Box forty one Titusville. Or you can uh, go to uh, uh, cbc. wherever it is here, cbc. at yahoo.com, cbc. at yahoo.com, and www.oregionlive.com is where you can find our services. Um, go over to the stream. We want to thank the stream and Armstrong Cable for making us available. And I understand we're still on the, on the air twice a week, uh, Sunday evening at 7 and uh, uh, Wednesday morning at 8 is what I understand. Anyone this morning have a prayer request? I, I, uh, let's see. I know we have Carl, Carl on, our, on, our prayer request, on our prayer list and uh, Dee Dee. And who else? Uh, any other prayers? Sarah? Okay. Anybody else have a prayer request? Anybody else? Yes, Gene. Mike. Mike, okay. And I have a written one here for uh, uh, Buster Jackson. The Schaefer family. Anyone else this morning? Sarah, you're going into... Surgery not this week, or Sue, you're going to surgery not this week, but next? 14th. The 14th, okay. All right. Anyone else? Yes, Mike. My sister, Alexis. Alexis? Okay, good. Thanks, Mike. Anyone else this morning? Let's go to the, oh, yes. Your grandma, okay. Uh huh. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear most uh, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for watching over us. We thank you for being the God who, who just truly is always there taking care of us. We thank you for our church and we thank you for all of our kids and we thank you for all the help that we have uh, from all the people. We thank you for, for the families that are, are, are taking part and growing with us. We thank you that you give us the ability to come and stand boldly before the throne of grace. That you are a God who, who truly cares and loves us so much. This morning we come to you and we ask you to, to be with, with Carl. 
uh, does he need your hand upon him and his care. We ask you to be with all of our kids as they, they go through the week and they need to be specially protected by you. We ask you to be with Dee Dee and, and Mike and Buster. We ask you to be with the Schaefer family and Alexis and Neil's grandparents. Grand, uh, we ask you to keep your hand on, on Ron and his eye and, ask, and we ask you to, to help his healing and his sight to come back. Lord, we ask you to be with Dave as, as he's uh, struggling with uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And, and Lord, we just, as we've said, we've asked you to just take that, take that completely away. We ask you to be with our families and guide us and help us to be the people that we need to be. Keep us strong and healthy and keep continuing to, to come back to you. Help us to learn so that we can come to you when we need to. Be with us as we get ready for communion this morning and open our hearts. Take away those things that stand between us and you so that we may better serve you. Lord, we ask you to be with this country, with all of those that serve this country in uniform, as well as their families that stand by and wait for their return. Either after, after a tour, or after a hitch, or after a day's service. We ask you to continue to be with the unrest that's in this country and to help bring, bring us peace on our streets to quell the violence that continues to, to, to grow in this country. We especially ask you to be with this country as we get closer to the, to the election cycle here, that you will continue to, to bring peace to this country and allow us to, to, to have... Uh, an election that is pleasing to you, that we will put somebody in office that will come to you in prayer and that will help guide our country in a way that we will be able to continue to be the Christian nation that we have always intended and needed and desired to be. Watch over us and guide us and help us be what we need to be. Be with our church and help us to continue to grow to be the beacon that we need to be in this community, to spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to all the ears who will open in here. We ask all these things in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. We stand here once a month, I, I do, and you know what, there's times I ask myself, are you ever going to get tired of, of, of the Lord's Supper, standing up here, do we ever get tired of that, do we ever, but we don't, right, every month we come before our Lord, it's, it's like, you know, it, this is always wonderful. It's always a blessing. It's always important. I've, I've been at churches where they've wanted to do communion once a quarter. Once a year we'll do communion once a year because we, you know, we don't want to waste that time or we want to do something else. And yet I find myself standing at here every, every month looking forward to communion when we come together. And we participate in, in this wonderful, wonderful meal that the Lord had died for us to have. Where he sat at the table and knew that he would give his life for us. That he would allow his body to be broken for us. But he took the bread and he broke it. And he passed it to his disciples. Knowing that he was thinking about himself. A little bit later we're going to have a sermon out of Revelation and we're going we're gonna to talk about the love that Jesus has for us. But one of the things that I, I want to make sure that doesn't pass by so easily is that, that 
there's so many older theologians in ancient age that believe that the pearly gates that we talk about, the gates that you'll hear about in our scripture, the, the gates of the, the new Jerusalem made of, of pearl, actually began by the piercing of the side of Jesus Christ. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your steadfast love for us. And we thank you for the steadfast love of our Lord Jesus Christ. We look forward to the day when we will be called up and we will be with Him. That we will be by your side and with Him for all eternity. This is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for us. After Jesus passed the, the bread, he took the cup. I, I can never do this without looking into the cup. It's one of the reasons that I, 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 I do this. Because I can never do that without thinking about the blood that was shed for us. Because without the, without the shedding of His blood, there, we, we would have sin on us forever. There's no possible way that we could be sinless. But we get to go and be the bride we get to go and be with our Lord. We get to go and be covered in, in righteousness because of His blood shed for us. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, it is beyond comprehension. But the most precious thing in all, all the universe was the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And you gave that up for us. How much does that make us special to you? Help us to live our lives understanding that we are of great value to you.
It wasn't too long ago. But if you're watching on TV or in here, that if you watch this new communion, it didn't take very long for me to pass the plate. Praise the Lord, it's taking longer as we grow, as we reach out and accept and know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and begin to live those lives that we need to live. This is the blood of Jesus Christ spilled and spread for us. And the congregation said, Amen. to finish up Revelation chapter 21, which will give us only two, one more chapter uh, in this um, wonderful, wonderful book of Revelation to, to go through. Revelation chapter 21, 15 through 27 this morning. So if you have your Bibles, please turn with me. Revelation 21, 15 through 27. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs, the length and the breadth, and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, an hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, or rather that is of an angel. And the building... Of the wall of it was of jasper, 
The city was pure gold like unto clear glass, and the foundations of the walls of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardis, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysosophus, the eleventh hyacinth, the twelfth Amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold as it was transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the life there, light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Just a minute ago, and it just dawned on me, but just a minute ago we took communion. But one of these days we're going to be in that city taking communion with our Lord. Can you imagine that? Is that too hard to imagine in that beautiful city? So first of all, let's examine the size of it. Because, you know, this is an amazing place. The 12,000 furlongs, or uh, the Bible, call, uh, actually in the original in Greek, it's strata, it, as it is written in the text, which means about uh, 1,500 miles on each side, the length and breadth and the height of it, 1,500 miles. Can you imagine a pure and beautiful city 1,500 miles wide and 1,500 miles long and now imagine it being 1,500 miles high. The Lord Jesus, the carpenter of Nazareth, is the one who built this city and he built it for you and for me so that we may live together with him and with God. Maybe the walls are to keep everything from falling out or spilling over, or maybe they are for habitation or just to mark a boundary. I mean, what is the purpose of a gate if there is no walls on either side? There will be people and God's other created beings living on the outside of, of the gates, those whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, those who made it through the millennium believed on Jesus or believed in God but did not make it uh, were not part of the Lamb's book of life. The walls are 144 cubics in height or about 216 feet tall. It is a wall with jasper built into it and is generally designated as a jasper wall. We would find that in the Old Testament in several places. The hardest of substances, the most beautiful gem constitute the exterior of the city. The twelve foundations of the city not only have the names of the twelve apostles, but they are twelve different precious stones. The most beautiful and costly articles known to man are precious stones. These stones express in human terms the magnificence of the city. The exceptional degree of gems is used to convey something of the glory of the city to those who know in this, now, in this age, see through a glass darkly. But someday, we will all see through it clearly. We'll all know everything. We won't be confused anymore. A close examination of these 12 stones in the foundation reveals its absolute beauty. Remember, our great Lord has built this city for us. The bride He gave His life for. You can only imagine that it would be the most beautiful thing you would ever imagine. Jasper is clear. This is probably the diamond. It is crystal clear, a reflector of light and color. The sapphire is blue. 
This stone occurs in Exodus 24.10 as the foundation of God. Chalcedony is greenish. Emerald is green. Sardox is white with layers of red. Sardis is fiery red. Chrysolite is golden yellow like topaz. Beryl is green. Pliny the Elder said it is sea green. Topaz is greenish yellow. Chrysanthemum is golden green. Hyacinth is violet. And amethyst is purple. The foundations of Jerusalem are constructed of the flashing brilliance, brilliance of rich and costly gems. On the inside is Jesus who, when he was here, was the light of the world. We just had communion, so it should be short in our memories that Jesus purchased us with his own blood. All the jewels of the universe he has at his disposal. If you can just imagine a city in your mind then, and at 1,500 miles, 12 layers of, 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 of foundation, Jesus ha has all, all of the worth in the world at his disposal. But they are not worthy enough to purchase our salvation. Can you understand that? With all the jewels, with all the gold, with all the silver, with all the precious gems in the world, they are not worthy of our salvation. To Jesus, His precious jewels are so common that He has built this beautiful city with them. We will walk on them. As beautiful as it might be and as precious to our eyes as well, we who live in there are purchased by something which no gem or gold or money could buy. The very blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This new Jerusalem comes down right out of heaven. Everything is going to revolve around it and the light will come from there. It truly will be the Jesus Christ Light and Power Company. The light will shine out in all this brilliant and beautiful colors in all directions. The new Jerusalem is a city of light and a city of color. God is light and He is there. The city is described as a jasper stone, as, a, as clear as crystal. All of this color will be coming out and flooding all throughout God's universe. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Several gate, every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. Even the street is transparent. It is gold, but transparent gold. The fact that it is transparent gold means that the light can shine out through it. There will be nothing to hinder the light, not even the street. And I saw no temple. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. God lights the new creation directly by His presence. After the entrance of sin into the old creation, God withdrew His presence and darkness covered the face of the deep. A lot of people go back to Genesis and don't really understand the difference, but the time difference in Genesis 1.1 1, 1 and Genesis 1.2. But because of, of Satan taking over this world, God had to withdraw. And we see clearly in the scripture that darkness covered the face of the deep. Then God made use of the physical lights in his universe and put them up like we put up street lights or lights in our homes. However, in the new creation, sin is removed and he again becomes the source of light. Today, the Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world in a spiritual sense. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. In the new creation, he is the direct physical as well as the spiritual light. In the tabernacle, there was the golden lampstand, 
which is one of the finest pictures of Christ. But in the New Jerusalem, He is the golden lampstand. The nations of the world will enter the holy city as the priest entered the holy place in the tabernacle for the purposes of worship. The nations of the earth as well as Israel will come to the new Jerusalem as the high priest of old entered the holy of holies. Instead of the blood being brought in, the lamb will already be there in person. The temple which supplanted the tabernacle back in that nation Israel was an earthly enclosure for the Shekinah glory. It was a testimony to the presence of God and the presence of sin. Where sin existed, God could not be approached only by the ritual of the temple. However, in the New Jerusalem, sin is no longer a reality. If it exists at all, it will exist only in a hideous nightmare. But since there will be no more pain, I doubt we even ever have that nightmare. The actual presence of God with the redeemed eliminates the necessity for a temple. Some have called attention to the fact that the New Jerusalem is the same shape as the Holy of Holies was in the tabernacle and the temple where God dwelt, a perfect cube. But that is no accident, I am sure. In the city of light, God is present and sin is absent. Therefore, an edifice or building of a material substance is no longer necessary to separate God from sin. The physical temple was a poor substitute for the presence of God. The New Jerusalem possesses the genuine article, God in person. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Again, we see here a distinction made between those living inside the city and those which are saved walking in the light of it. They are outside and they bring their worship and maybe their workmanship into it. This is my reason for saying that there will be a great deal of traffic commuting back and forth between the New Jerusalem and this earth. Not only will Israel come up uh, uh, there to worship, but the nations of the world which have entered eternity will also come up. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. There, It is nonsense to say that the gates will not be shut at night because there will be no night. Therefore, John says that they will not be shut by day. In other words, they are going to throw away the key because there will be no danger anywhere around. In John's day, a walled city had gates for the purposes of protection. When the gate of the city was closed, it meant that an enemy was on the outside and that they were trying to keep him there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Finally, God has approached apparently accomplished his original purpose for the creation of mankind. Fellowship. He now has. A creature who is a free moral agent and who chooses to worship and serve him eternally. This is what this whole exercise of these few years that we are going through down here is to prepare us for this time when we will be Worshipping, well, we will be the priests in the temple, worshiping and serving our Lord for all eternity. There, uh, there can be no light. There can be no night, since the Lamb is the light, and He is eternally present. Isn't that amazing? That He will always be there to be with us. The gates are not for protection, and they are never closed. Rather, they are the badge or coat of arms of the bride. Notice that these gates are of pearl. The pearl of great price has been purchased at a great price. You see, this is what makes me so sad when I do my counseling. How often do you see yourself as a pearl of great price? Nearly no one does. 
because of Satan. We almost never see ourselves as being a pearl of great price, having great value. We too easily see ourselves as worthless, worth nothing. So we do worth nothing things with ourselves because Satan has taught us this lie. Just how many of us would fill our bodies with cocaine and alcohol and tobacco and etc, etc, etc if we really understood just how valuable we are. A pearl of great price. You were purchased with a great price because you are valuable. God created you for a special purpose to spend time with Him. In the parable in Matthew 13 that the Lord Jesus gave, the pearl is not Christ whom the sinner buys. What it is, is it that the sinner is capable to pay? What can we do to pay for Christ? We have nothing. He hasn't anything that we can pay with. We must read the parable the other way around. The merchant man who bought that pearl was the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And the pearl is you and me, the bride. The Lord Jesus Christ paid a great price to buy this pearl. This pearl was formed from his very side, like I said before, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. The Lamb's Book of Life contains the names of the redeemed of all ages. No one who was not redeemed by the blood of Christ will ever be permitted to enter the portals of the New Jerusalem. There is a great gulf fixed between the saved and the lost. The lost are forever burning in the lake of fire. The greatest joy that will capture the heart of the redeemed will be that of abiding in the presence of Christ for eternity. The that where I am, there ye may be also, is what he said in John 14.3. This is heaven, to be with Christ and with God. Revelation is all about Jesus Christ. He is the centerpiece of God's universe. In Hebrews 12.22, we are told there is also present an innumerable company of angels who evidently constitute the servant class. The city is cosmopolitan in character. All na nationalities meet there. And the created intelligence of God walk the street of the New Jerusalem. Among the multitudes, there is not one who will bring defilement or sin. No liar liar will ever enter the portals of the heavenly Jerusalem. All dwellers and all tourists are not only redeemed from sin, but have also lost their taste for sin. They come through the gates which are never closed. The enjoyment of this glorious city is not restricted to the church, although the church, we who make up the church, are the only ones who will ever dwell there. What a picture, and how inadequate I have been able to deal with it. Oh, if only you and I could just be lifted up so that just for a moment we could just get a glimpse of the glory of that city. We might for a, a, that time discover ourselves as, as being a pearl of great price. Can we just imagine being lifted up and seeing our home? Certainly that would influence our lives, I think. If we could only just believe that we could be loved that much that we had so much promise. In times past, I've come to the end of my sermon and I've always said to, don't be that guy. But finally I come to a place where I don't say, don't be that guy, and say, if we could only be that guy, the one God wants us to be, what would we then do with this life to at least try to be worthy? Our hymn of dedication this morning is We Are Marching to Zion.
Now tell me, truthfully, how many people want to stay here? And how many people want to go to the New Jerusalem? Do they got truck pulls in the New Jerusalem? They might, I don't know. They might have all kinds of wonderful things. Our mind can't even imagine it. That's why I say, when you go through the scripture, we can only use this mind to imagine the wonder. But I know that when I go back through the scripture, one of the first thing God did after he created man was to put him to work. So when we get to heaven, I know we're going to have a lot of things to do and we're going to enjoy every minute of it. Will my ushers please come forward for our tithes and offerings? Will you please rise? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you just in awe and amazement. How could you love me so much? Help us to be worthy of that love. We thank you for this offering and we thank you for each and every person here for all the work that everyone does. Lord, this church takes a lot of talent, a lot of energy, and we ask that each of us not only be good stewards of the, the money that we have, but of our time and our talents as well. For all the kids that we have here, we truly need lots of time and energy and talent, and I thank everyone. And I want I ask you to keep your hand upon upon each and every one and bless each and every one for the, the gift that, gifts that they give this church. Watch over us and guide us and be with us this week. Keep your hand upon us as we go our separate ways. Watch over our homes and our cars and, and our health and our finances and keep us happy and healthy and safe and strong. Give us each the opportunity to, to witness to someone next, this week and to invite someone to come to church. We ask you to especially be with our children and their parents and the, all of those that provide care, Lord, to keep them safe, to watch over them and guide them, to give them guidance in a proper way so they will grow up. Lord, one day we're going to need one of them stand, unless you come before then. We're going to need one of them standing in this pulpit. So help us prepare them and prepare the way. Guide us, lead us, and direct us. Help us to be all that we can be. In Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen.
Don't forget, we have potluck next uh, Sunday. Taco, tacos and homemade ice cream. If the kids can churn enough, we'll get that done. And uh, have a wonderful week. You may be dismissed.